Elections have consequences. I can't say that enough. This goes out to all of you dumb asses, and in particular, you dumb ass black millennials who said that you're not gonna vote. Uh, the elections are rigged, yada, yada, yada. Well, guess what? You guys were crying before about the lack of justice in America. Let me point out to you that the, the Department of Justice, prior to eight years ago, did jack shit about racial issues, about discrimination, voter suppression, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then, all of a sudden, Eric Holder comes on the scene and he ramps up the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division. <coughs> okay? At the point that he got in there, they had both houses of Congress. So he was able to get that ramp up done. Two years later, when they got the House of Representatives, all of a sudden, this started to be a pushback. Two years after that, when the Republicans got the Senate, all of a sudden, there was a major pushback on staffing the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division. They blocked the nomination of a highly qualified black guy to head the Civil Rights Division. And why, what reason did they use? Well, he defended uh, some uh, serial killer uh, and they were all pissed off about that. Nobody happened to bring up the fact that the Chief Justice on the Supreme Court did the same thing down in Florida and he got confirmed. Didn't bring that up. So now, guess what? You have one motherfucker that is angling to get the attorney general job to run the Department of Justice, which oversees the FBI. Now, prior to the past week's events, there were two guys in the running, Rudy Giuliani and Chris Christie. Well, it looks like Chris is getting kicked to the curb. So you are looking at Racist Rudy becoming the Attorney General of the United States. If you think shit was bad during the past eight years, you ain't seen nothing. Right now, you have Department of Justice prosecutions going on against the detective that strangled Eric Garner in New York. You have the Department of Justice looking at filing charges, which they already have started to file charges, but you're looking at additional charges that look like they were going to be filed against the uh, people that were responsible for the Flint, Michigan water crisis. Those are going to go away. You're looking at various cities around the country that are under consent orders, cities like Milwaukee, well, that's ongoing, but that's going to disappear, Cleveland, uh, Baltimore, uh, Los Angeles, uh, to mention a few. All of that shit under the new attorney general, all that shit's going away. So 
as I stated, elections have consequences. And for all of you black people who decided uh, that you weren't going to get out there and vote, this video clip is for you. To be attorney general, do you feel that you have the energy? Do you feel oh my God, God, the yes. desire? Uh, I, I certainly have the energy and there's probably nobody that knows the Justice Department better than me. Former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani is one of those, is among those rumored to be under consideration for the attorney general gig under Trump, along with New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who's been replaced by Mike Pence as the head of Trump's transition e e effort. The Department of Justice, currently led by Loretta Lynch, served as a watchdog for police misconduct under the Obama administration, a role that could be dramatically diminished under a, quote, law and order president who has called for a broad expansion of stop and frisk. Heather McGee is back with me, and joining me now is Janai Nelson of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and Vince Warren of the Center for Constitutional Rights. Thank you guys uh, all for being here. So let's talk law and order for just a moment, and I'm going to start with you, um, my friend. Let's listen to Donald Trump at Hofstra University. This was the first debate back in September. Take a listen. We have to bring back law and order. Now, whether or not in a place like Chicago you do stop and frisk, which worked very well, Mayor Giuliani is here, it worked very well in New York, it brought the crime rate way down, but you take the gun away from criminals that shouldn't be having it. We have gangs roaming the street, and in many cases, they're illegally here, they're illegal immigrants, and they have guns, and they shoot people. Did the stop and frisk system, I'm going to throw it to both of you guys, because you guys were, you were involved in it, Vince, um, did it work here, did it reduce crime, did it make black people feel safer? Not at all. <laughs> what we just heard was uh, just a series of falsehoods, not surprising, that suggest that stop and frisk did something to better the crime rate, and it did not. It, in fact, terrorized communities. It terrorized New York City communities, and we brought lawsuits along with our partners at CCR, um, and a a district court, a federal court judge held that these policies were discriminatory, that they did not, in fact, improve the quality of life and were intended to target minorities. Um, there is no way that we should roll back the clock and try to resurrect policies that have been harmful, that have been divisive, and that have violated civil rights of so many citizens. Now, I got a question, and you just heard that clip from Donald Trump talking about uh, uh, law and order and um, talking about Chicago and stop and frisk and illegal gangs uh, and uh, illegal gangs, um, gangs that are here illegally. Well, which one is it? Is it uh, black on black crime, which is the uh, thing that uh, various groups uh, consistently push you know, they consistently push uh, the 94% uh, uh, crime rate, the uh, black on black crime, or is it the illegal residents uh, that are here, which aren't black, those have quote unquote been labeled as uh, Hispanic or whatever. It can't be both. Either it's black people that are here illegally that are creating the problem or it's the illegal gangs that are here illegally that are creating the problem. But you can't make both arguments, okay? But obviously nobody pays attention to that. You know, what does it do to, to you as somebody who fought these policies and who's lived under Rudy? I mean, not, not a lot of Americans have. I have lived under Rudy Giuliani as mayor of New York. You have experienced Rudy Giuliani firsthand. What does it say to you that he could be elevated to the job that Robert Kennedy had, to the job of protecting the American people, of running, the, of, of overseeing the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department, and combining him with bringing back stop and frisk nationally. It, it, it's, it's a horrifying prospect. I can't think of anybody who would be more ill-suited to take to do that job than Rudy Giuliani. You know, one of the things that we're seeing in our society is that communities are being criminalized, right? So you have African Americans that are considered criminals and Muslim Americans considered terrorists and, and um, it, immigrants and undocumented people are considered legal and probably all of the above. So we have to shift from a 
from an idea of criminalization to community protection. And that's been a traditional job of attorney generals in the Justice Department to protect community against these kind of racist things. He is the last person on the planet that would want to do that, would be capable of doing that, and it's a horrifying prospect. And, and you know, and I harp on him a lot uh, because, again, you know, to live in New York under Mayor Giuliani was to be terrified if you were a person of color, to feel hunted by the police. And so, I mean, people, I, you need to get, if you're not from New York and you don't know who this person is and you think he's just Mr. 9-11, I want you to, to listen to him himself. And I was sitting on the desk here at MSNBC when he said this, um, when he was asked a question by our colleague Chris Matthews about Trump winning. This was the first thought that came to Rudy Giuliani's mind on election night. Take a listen. This is like Andrew Jackson's victory. This is the people beating the establishment. And that's how he posited it right from the beginning. The people are rising up against a government they find to be dysfunctional. And yes, it's a defeat for the Democrats, but this is a defeat for some Republicans, too. Heather, referencing Andrew Jackson, your thoughts? Making America um, pre-Civil War again. Yeah. I mean, really, we have weaponized the idea of white fear through this election. And Rudy Giuliani, in some ways, is a, a really strong personification of that idea. That uh, He's called Black Lives Matter as a movement inherently racist. Um, we know, uh, those of us in the broad movement for black lives, that the shift from you know being having a Department of Justice that's going to investigate uh, widespread uh, misconduct by uh, police departments like those in Ferguson and Baltimore, um, that it is a risk that we run that someone who could be put into that position to uphold the civil rights and liberties of this nation, of the people of this nation, is someone with a terrible track record on police brutality. I mean, some of the most vivid memories we have of people being raped by toilet plungers comes from the Giuliani era, and he has, he has never backed down, never backed down from defending police during that era. And so this is visceral, and it's something that we have to take a step back and say, wait a second. Nobody actually um, is saying that this is the way our country should move forward, right? That there isn't actually this broad mandate for um, a return to the dark days of Giuliani's New York and the police force under Giuliani's New York. And this is, it's one thing to have him being sort of resurrected by 9-11 and be a commentator on the news, but it's another thing to put this man from the past, frankly, in charge of our nation's yeah. law. Yeah, say nothing All right, and for those of you who uh, don't really know your history, uh, Andrew Johnson uh, was the person that replaced Abraham Lincoln after Lincoln got assassinated. Andrew Johnson was a Southerner, okay? He, he had been a Southern governor, I believe. Now, after the Civil War, one of uh, Abraham Lincoln's generals, he became the de facto governor of a very large territory stretching from uh, Florida up through... South Carolina. And he had issued an edict which was signed off on by President Lincoln. You would know that as an executive order that black people, the freed slaves, each family would receive 40 acres of land and the loan of a mule in order to work that land. So what ended up happening is they started snatching up land from uh, these white plantation owners, you know, people uh, of uh, means, stretching from, again, South Carolina to Florida. And the land that they snatched up and gave to black people was some pretty good land, especially since we were an agrarian uh, society at, at that point. Well, when Johnson came in, he reversed that executive order. 
And that's when they started taking the land back away from uh, black people. Okay, so that's when we actually lost our 40 acres and the loan of a mule. We got it through executive order and we lost it uh, through the cancellation of the executive order. Just a little uh, history lesson for you guys. We're running out of time, but the other person I just want to alert our, our audience to that is uh, being thought of for a job is a guy named David Clark. I call him Pitchfork David Clark because this was the tweet that he put out back on October 15th when he didn't think that they, his side was going to win. And it's incredible that our institutions of government, White House, Congress, DOJ, big media are corrupt and all we do is B word, pitchforks and torches time. And then this was his new attitude toward protest on Friday when people who are scared of the anti, you know, of the Trumpists who are beating up gay people and, and Hispanics and threatening people and threatening and scaring children. He said these riots are not protests and should be quote quickly. These goon anarchists do not believe the U.S. Constitution or the rule of law. Um, and he is the Wisconsin sheriff. This is a man who someone died of thirst in his jail. <laughs> Your thoughts uh, on him becoming potentially Homeland Security Director? The, the it, it, it's hard it's hard to process all of the horrible things that people are saying um, I, I would say this um, in any attorney general that looks at the right to protest and uh, the way that people are pushing back against police brutality they're putting back against back against racism and sees that as a threat to the rule of law and law and order is someone that has we have no business employing in our government the first amendment and our right to protest as humans as African Americans is key it has to be upheld and we can't have anybody in here who would half step on that at yeah. and last, last very quick before we go the police officer who killed and choked to death Eric Garner now being very good about the new election, thinking that he may get a reprieve, that this relook at this case is going to be is going to go away. Yeah, we, we simply cannot allow that to happen. I mean, obviously this is a significant shift, but we still need to hold anyone associated with the new president-elect uh, accountable to enforce these laws. The Department of Justice has a duty; it's the most prominent entity to investigate and enfo enforce law, and we have to rely upon it to continue to do so. And it's high time that we call these statements what they are. This is a direct appeal to white tribalism. This was not a vote for change. This was a vote for the status quo of white privilege. And this is something we must push back against. The 75% of eligible voters who did not support Trump, it's our duty to come out and ensure that we hold this administration as accountable as any other. We must remain offended. We must remain uh, outraged and oppositional to the absolutely degenerative policies that he's trying to put forward. Don't go home and hide in your bed and you feel depressed. I'm telling you, y'all are depressed. There's still a lot ahead of you that you're going to have to really think about and be vigilant about. Don't sit home depressed. Uh, Heather McGee will be back. Jani Nelson and Vin. All right, you guys. So, um, that uh, detective uh, that they were getting ready to uh, charge uh, with um, murder, manslaughter, whatever, uh, in the Eric Garner uh, murder, that guy is smiling big time because that ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen under Rudy Giuliani or pretty much Chris Christie, which I don't think he's going to get it. It's going to be Giuliani. It's going to be Giuliani or somebody just like him. And we don't have anybody to blame for the loss of any quote unquote protections that were previously uh, given to us by the Department of Justice. Now, you may agree or disagree how effective the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division has been uh, for us, but at least they did something. Now they're not going to do a damn thing. Elections have consequences.